Hey everybody, the Banga's back. Welcome to part 17 of Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship Tournament 2004, brought to you by GameAnyone.com. One minor change to my deck, Guardian of the Throne Room is taken out, and I won a Vorse Raider from the Dark Ruler of Hades booster pack off camera. So that's actually a very good addition to my deck, and now it's time for Maximilian Pegasus to win the Guardian Sphinx booster pack. If I beat Pegasus, of course. But I am very confident in my chances. Speaking of Vorse Raider, he got his own on the field. Good for him! He must feel so proud. Okay, I think I know how I'm going to start this off. Man your Bug, face down, in my turn. Alright, Pegasus, your move. Oh, he got no other monsters? Probably just mostly Toon Monsters in his hand. That would explain why he never put any out. And now your Voice Raider's gone. My move now. I'm gonna save mine for later. My best course of action, just summon Garachin Kuwagata to the field. And depending on what traps they are, I might as well just draw them out before I bring in my big monsters. Enchanted Javelin. Okay, so he gained the same amount of life points as my attack power, but he lost it back, so he broke even. Therefore, it practically functioned as a negate attack. That's it? Huh. Okay. I guess now I can bring in some very good monsters like Gemini L for Vorse Raider. So I'm feeling pretty good about my chances now. Given that he is completely vulnerable. Oh, another enchanted javelin. The good thing I attack with my weakest monster first, rather than my strongest. Otherwise I'd only be doing 200 points less than what I did now. We'd like to draw a spell or a trap though. Because I need my Magician of Faith to have some use. Again, no monsters! Like nothing! He's got nothing to protect him! Oh, this is just gonna be a throwaway! He must have some very terrible cards in his hand. Like, he won't be able to do anything with them until he probably just draws Toon World. And even then, if he's at less than a thousand life points, he won't be able to use Toon World. Remember, he has to pay 1,000 life points to activate it. Not to mention, when it comes to special summoning Toon Monsters, he has to pay 500 life points for them to attack. So he's even more limited. Okay, looks like he might have something. Uh, just to play it on the safe side, I'm gonna put my Vorse Raider in defense mode. And now I'm going to attack directly. Aha! I knew something was up. In my turn. That one trap card saved him for a little bit. Too bad it won't save him for too long. It has its limits, you know. Okay, seven colored fish in attack mode. I'm gonna put Vorth Raider back into attack mode. And now I'll just go to town. Hopefully I'll be able to win on this turn. Ah, Nimble Momonga. That just saved him. Oh, God. Looks like we're gonna be here for the long haul after all. He just managed to survive right there. A crafty Pegasus, I tell ya. Alright, in my turn. You just hung on right there. Monster Reborn? Oh, no, 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 no. Not today! Or tonight, because I'm recording this on like 9.20 p.m. on a Monday. June the 3rd? Yeah, I record well ahead of time, but you guys already knew that. I mean, it's just Yu-Gi-Oh! There's no real plots. I mean, why not? 
Yeah, we'll go with this approach here. Okay, I think I might be able to win on this turn still. Yeah, it'll be a total of 3,700 points of damage. Yep, I got it. He couldn't hang on for much longer. But I will give him credit where credit's due. He made it interesting. But with that, I still get the win. And now I have Guardian Sphinx from Pharaonic Guardian. So there's a lot of booster packs to choose from now. Ooh, King Tiger Wangu. As long as this card remains face up on the field, all monsters that have been normal summoned or special summoned that have an attack of 1400 or less will be automatically destroyed. Oh, it's excluding flip summon. That looks interesting. You know, it could be a very good effect, but that can destroy my monsters too. We'll see. Jowls of Dark Demise. Take control of one monster on your opponent's side of the field until the end of the turn which this card's effect is activated. When the control monster attacks, it may cause direct damage to your opponent's life points. Really? So I can just flip this on my turn. Then... Apparently that control monster can do direct damage? That looks pretty interesting! Ooh, I might consider putting that in my deck. But what am I going to take out? No, not not by uh, name. I want to go by attack. So I got to think about this for a moment here. I'm thinking my uh, Gerochin Kuwagata can go. Because I got like Darkfire Soldier number two. Well, actually I should take out one of those. And put in Jowls of Dark Demise. Because that's a pretty damn good effect here. You know, I might, might come across something else that I could swap out. And I'll keep Honey Honey, because it might bail me out. Actually, why don't I take out Honey Honey, and probably bring in something else? Hyro Shadow Skull, I think that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so, with that in mind, Jowls of Dark Demise. Should have just went in alphabetical order. Up oh, there we go. Right, now it's time to finally take on the ghouls, and this is where it gets tough, and it gets a bit cheap. Okay, so Rare Hunter is also an Exodia deck. What do I mean by the ghouls being absolutely cheap? Well, how do I put it this way? You know how you have certain cards that are restricted or limited? You know, like Regeki, you can only have one of. Well, let's just say that the ghouls don't exactly follow that rule at all. In fact, they can have up to three of pretty much any card. No joke. This guy even has three of each Exodia piece, making it super easy to get the five pieces of Exodia that he needs to beat you. Yeah, that's what I mean by cheap. You know what else is cheaper? In order to get to Duel Merrick, you have to defeat five ghouls consecutively. And that's where it gets so annoying and so cruel that most people just end up quitting playing this game all because of the ghouls by themselves. Can't say I blame them. Okay, I'm going to use Man Eater Bug to destroy this monster instantly. Okay, what was it? Oh, Mystic Tomato. Okay, that worked in my favor. Okay, I'm going to let Man Eater Bug attack directly. So in case that's a Mirror Force, I protected my Garrochin Kuagata. Okay, it wasn't. But that might still be a Trap Hole or Torrential Tribute. Let's test the waters right now. Trap hole, okay. I don't think I summoned yet, did I? No. Another trap hole. So basically the spell card I could really use, well actually two, is Confiscation and Delinquent Duo. 
Okay, so he has no monsters to protect him. You see, having like three of each Exodia piece, if that's true, can actually come back to haunt him. Because he's not going to play those on the field. He's instead going to only hope for like Mystic Tomato, maybe Penguin Soldier if he has it. Sangin, Witch of the Black Forest, which again, he could have three of each. Because apparently, ghouls are cheating whores. That's where it gets really tough, but this could work against him. I just gotta beat him fast, because if I do not, he can snag the pieces of Exodia quickly. He might have like three or four of the kinds that he needs right now. So in other words, maybe it's not a good idea for me to attack right away. Speaking of which, I think I should put Man of Your Bug in defense mode. I'm gonna wait till I get Delinquent Duo or Confiscation. Because I could use those spell cards in a bad way. Wait, if I bring in Cyber Jar, it'll destroy my monsters, but then it'll force them to draw, and if he gets Exodia pieces, he has to play them! I'm gonna do it! But there's also a risk to that, because what if he draws an Exodia piece, and it happens to be the fifth one he needs? That's where it can become problematic. But I mean, I gotta try. This is pretty much gonna be my best chance, so I gotta do it. Activate that effect. And let's hope it doesn't bite me in the ass. Ooh, Heavy Storm. Imperial Order. Seven Tools of the Bandit. Forest Raider. Okay, you're going in attack mode. Gecky, crap. Graceful Charity, crap. Torrential Tribute. Start Goblin. Right Arm of the Forbidden One. Okay, now a Witch of the Black Forest. And a Sangin! Ooh. I think he beat me. He did beat me! Crap! Oh, well that's shitty. I lose. Yep, just be gentle with me. Well, that was a terrible loss, if you ask me. Just couldn't get the cards I wanted, and my strategy backfired. Alright, let's try this again. No, I didn't want to go random. Why did I... Did I just go to the wrong opponent? Well, that was stupid of me. Hey, well, this is going to be one loss I'm going to have to take, unfortunately. Yeah, I did not want to surrender because I didn't want to dual Pegasus in the first place. That, that, was my, that was my fault. I'll take that one on the chin. This is where I meant to go. Alright, Rare Hunter, I'm going to take you on again. Only this time you're not going to get so lucky. Alright then. I think I should go with you face down. That's all for now. At least the ghouls actually have some pretty good music. I mean, I like this theme. It's very haunting. Just tells you they mean business. Even though they're cheating, it just means they mean business. The Red of Witch of the Black Forest. Right leg of the Forbidden One. I can't let him get too comfortable with the cards he has. I don't think I want to use that Cyber Jar effect again. But then again, if I do, like right away, it'll work better for me. Let me put you face down as well. Alright, let's see how you're going to do this. Upstart Goblin. Mystic Tomato. Okay, well, I'm not worried about Mystic Tomato being destroyed. Oh, crap. Well, there goes my Cyber Jar. There goes his own monster. You even got to activate Mystic Tomato's effect, idiot. But then again, the AI likes to play Torrential Tribute every se single chance it gets. As evidenced right there. I bet you that's Mirror Force. Nope, negate attack, so I get to keep my monster. 
Okay. Your move. Upstart Goblin again. He just keeps drawing cards. Now he gets to draw three more and discards two. Oh my god. And he has no monsters to bring out. Wait, this guy's tough. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I've had many losses when I first played this game against this guy alone. Rare Hunter is absolutely the bane of my existence in this game. The other ghouls, while they still ch are cheap with their uh, with the lack of restrictions, are not as bad because they don't have Exodia. They just have other means to kick your ass. Ugh, oh, Geki, can you let me have one monster, please? Hmm. Even though it's gonna cost me my draw phase, I'm gonna activate it. What are the odds you're gonna win on this turn? You only have four cards. You can't have the fifth piece if you don't have five cards. Okay, time to swing for the fences. Alright, let's do this. Bring you down a little bit further. What other cards does he have in his hand that he can use against me? Another Regeki or another Dark Hole? Nothing! Oh, he's got mostly Exodia pieces. I can just see that right now. I won't be able to win on this turn, unfortunately. I just needed an extra 1,000 attack points and I could have made it work. Just hoping he doesn't bring in a Sangin or a Witch of the Black Forest on the field. If, I, if he does, I could be sunk. Alright, this is going to be the moment of truth here. Ooh, what is that face down card? I have no idea. Luckily, I only need to attack with one monster. I'll put you in defense mode. If I get the win here, that's gonna be awesome. I do! Awesome! Alright! So now, we begin our streak. Sure, it's only one, but hey, one is better than none. Okay, Nightmare Wheel? Do I like Nightmare Wheel? Select a monster belonging to your opponent. As long as this card remains face up on the field, that monster cannot attack or change its battle position. This card causes 500... No. 500 points of direct damage to your opponent's life points during each of your standby phases. When the selected monster is destroyed or removed from the field, this card is also destroyed. Meaning, I can decide not to destroy a monster and just keep doing direct damage. That might be handy. Wait, I already have Reckless. No, I don't. Draw two cards from your deck and skip your next two draw phases. I don't know if I want to go with that. Maybe I do. Just get them right away. De La Cuda, or Des La Cuda. You can flip this card into face down defense position once per turn during your main phase. When this card is flipped summoned, you may draw one card from your deck. Hmm. Okay, should I have one more duel right now? I say we should. Let's continue on this little streak, shall we? Arcana! Okay, apparently his uh, deck strategy is Tributes. But he's also mostly has Dark Magician cards. I think... Oh, this is bad. Well, Mystical Elf is not too bad. Change of Heart is gonna be very good. Ugh, oh, crap. It was good while I was still alive. Oh my god, don't do this. Why did you put it in attack mode? I don't understand you, Arcana. Okay, let's see. I want to play Heavy Storm right now. What was that trap card anyway? Ring of Destruction, alright. 
So I think I'll play Delinquent Duo right now. It'll cost me a thousand life points. But now I practically crippled this guy's hand. What did I get rid of? Serpent Knight Dragon and Dark Magician! That's the evil Dark Magician from the anime! Okay, so I'm gonna play a Change of Heart right now. Take the Mystical Elf, and then I'll sacrifice it for Cybertech Alligator. Oh, this is gonna work out for the best. And if I can get a Monster Reborn, then I can probably take one of his monsters. That Dark Magician is gonna be really good on my side. Alright, your move. You don't have much to play with. Mm, but that can make a world of difference for him. So, sadly, I can't do much. As much as I'd like to bring in Mask of Darkness, I don't have any traps in my graveyard. So it'll be pointless to bring out. Okay, well that's no big deal. You move, Arcana. Oh, Jesus. Oh, come on. You are a dick, you know that? They should have called you Arcane Ass. Because that's what you are, you're an ass. Oh, my God. This is just. This is comical. I guess I have to use my Mask of Darkness face down. I don't have any traps, but I gotta protect myself. There, this will protect me from taking damage. That's useless. Alright, my move. Jowls of Dark Demise. Sadly, I can't keep it alive. But at least I can take control of one monster for a little bit. It'll... What? Well, why'd you do that? Probably just get me closer to defeat. Fair enough. Your move. Monster Reborn. Ugh, Serpent Knight Dragon. Well, I'll take control of it for a little bit, but unfortunately, it returns at the end of the turn. Too bad I can't just hold on to it for a bit longer. Oh, this is just a little too little too late, unfortunately. He just managed to get the cards he needed at the right time. Cannon Soldier? That work does 500 points of damage to me. And there goes La Jin. Okay, I, I need a good card that can beat that Serpent Knight Dragon. That's not gonna do it for me. It's just stall tactics. So my streak is practically going to be over before it even began. But I'm just hanging on by a thread. I'm losing some good monsters, that's the problem. Cyberjar could save me, but it could save him as well. Well, that's not going to help me. Nope, I lost. It's over. At least he's dumb enough to sacrifice it and bring in a weaker monster like another neck hunter. And he's not going to do that. Well, that was pointless. Man, I only had like one win and already my streak is over. Remember, you have to win five in a row against ghouls. That's where it gets tough. Okay, I'm going to stop the video right here and then the next part I'm going to definitely try again. See ya, everybody.